What's up everybody, this is Danny, and today I'm gonna to be doing a very interesting camera comparison between the Galaxy S23 Ultra and the OnePlus 11, and also the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So, the OnePlus starts at a significantly smaller price tag than these two phones right here, $699. So what I wanna find out is, are these two other phones worth hundreds of dollars more? So let me know what the front-facing camera video looks like, and also what the audio sounds like, and then we're gonna test these out in every condition to see if this phone can keep up with these two other phones at a significantly lower price tag. Budget flagship phones isn't something that we talk about all the time, so I'm excited for this video. I know a lot of you wanted to see a Galaxy S23 Ultra versus iPhone 14 Pro Max photo comparison, so this is a great chance for me to test all three. The daytime shots are going to be personal preference. As you can see, the colors are quite different across the phones. They all produce great shots and have good dynamic range with that nice natural depth of field. Speaking generally, the S23 Ultra has the more saturated approach, as you can see here in the sky color, but sometimes the iPhone has that darker blue approach, which which means more contrast is applied to the picture and once in a while the oneplus will process with more of a red tone like i've seen on google pixel devices so again i think it just heavily depends on what you like so let's just start comparing them one feature at a time to see which one does it best first let's start off with the zoom this is where the galaxy s23 ultra is on another level this is the main and then the 2x zoom is on the oneplus 11 where the iphone and s23 ultra have a 3x telephoto then there is the 10x optical zoom on the S23 Ultra, and that is 10x digital on the other two. There is the max digital zooms on the other two phones while you see 30x there on the S23 Ultra. The iPhone is surprisingly good at 15x digital though, but the S23 Ultra's 100x zoom is very impressive here. Here is another scenario for a zoom test. I was surprised with the outcome. And at 10x digital zoom compared to the 10x optical on this one, the OnePlus 11 really shined looks so much better than I thought it would, but if you want the best zoom that you can get in your pocket, I would lean towards the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Next up are the high resolution modes. The good news is all of them have a high res capture mode. The Samsung has two at 50 megapixels and 200 megapixels, where the OnePlus 11 has a 50 megapixel mode, and the iPhone 14 Pro Max has a 48 megapixel capture ability with Pro Raw, so I wanted to test them out side by side. I am starting here with the 50 megapixel mode on the S23 Ultra. At 300% scale crop, they are all very detailed, but the OnePlus 11 looks to be the most over sharpened out of the two. Here are some more wildlife examples with that high resolution so you can keep a distance. Here is that same image at 300% scale and the S23 Ultra giving you something that you can share right away on social media with that sharpness and saturation so let me know which one that you like better. This test was done just to see the pure detail level that you can get. They all look very similar here but then when you punch in you can see the over sharpening on the OnePlus 11 processing. The iPhone lands the most editable in post which makes sense because it is Pro Raw but the Samsung is super detailed so the 50 megapixel mode is very legit on the S23 Ultra. Of course we can't skip that 200 megapixel mode. This is good for landscape shots. We're going to concentrate on the area way back here. 500% crop, you can see the sharpening here again in the middle. Both the iPhone and Samsung looking really clean here. But when you go into the 1000% scale, you can see that resolution advantage on the Samsung. But no one's really going to zoom in this far, but this is just to show you the difference. Next up, let's compare portrait mode. And I like shots like this because it shows you the camera's approach to how natural it wants the background blurring to be. The OnePlus though, I must admit, is having the hardest time with the bright light washing out the colors, where the other two retain that contrast. Here is the one closer up and they are doing a decent job, but I like the iPhones best here. That dramatic contrast and foreground priority looks great. Of course, pictures of people matter the most and in bright sunlight, I think they all do a great job of cutting the subject out. The OnePlus only has a 2X zoom option in portrait, which isn't a big deal, but the other two phones do have a 3X portrait mode option, which I think is a great focal length for portraits. The S23 Ultra gives you that stylistic look with contrast and color pop, which I think a lot of people will like. The OnePlus is not bad at all here either, but I do like the iPhone's controlling of the highlights on my wife's skin here, so I like this one the most. But in this one, the Galaxy S23 Ultra just knocked it out of the park. This one is ready to share instantly. Not saying that the other two aren't great either because they both look fantastic, but this one just stands out to me. I did some impossible tests for portrait mode like this bike. You normally would never do this, but here it is. Of course, all of them failed on the spokes of the wheel and the basket up top, but that was to be expected. But this one surprised me. A very thin chain hanging down and the S23 Ultra really nailed it here. The iPhone couldn't even pick it up. Believe it or not, I tried this about 10 times and this was the best I got. 
Let's compare macro mode next, and I think this is where you take the biggest hit with OnePlus. I personally don't care about macro, but if you do, the lower resolution macro doesn't look the best on OnePlus. It's not like it looks bad by any means, and for a quick shot, it'll definitely do, but comparing them to the two pricier flagships, you're going to get better quality macro shots with the other two. We will finish up with the front facing camera. This is another place where you will sacrifice some quality with the OnePlus 11. Not that the images are terrible, but when you put them side by side with the iPhone and the S23 Ultra, you can see a quality difference. And also from a color replication standpoint, the OnePlus also likes to saturate the skin tones, at least on me. In challenging situations like this where the sun is super strong, the other two show their processing advantages. So let me know which one that you think takes the best selfies. So during the day, I think this will all be about features that you need and which style that you like best. The OnePlus 11, while arguably being the weakest camera system out of the three, I think it keeps up well for the price point that it falls in. For most people who are trying to stay within budget but want that flagship power and the camera isn't their priority in a phone, then OnePlus 11 might be for you. And it'll definitely be more than adequate for your everyday needs. When it comes to overall daytime images though, as a whole, I think I'm gonna give a slight edge to the Galaxy S23 Ultra. It's not perfect, but the flexibility and improvements in the camera system this year makes this one very tough to beat. Before we jump into nighttime, let's look at the video. Here is 4K 30 frames per second on all of them, and in this scenario, I really like the contrast that the iPhone's video brings, and I think it's the best looking video here, but I'm surprised how close the Samsung and OnePlus is to each other. It always depends on the scenario, but here the S23 Ultra has that slight extra contrast, so I think I prefer that here, but props to Samsung, they really improved the video quality this year on the S23 Ultra. But the OnePlus also looks nice too, so I'm surprised there as well. The S23 Ultra and OnePlus 11 can shoot 8K, so I wanted to test that to see which one is better. Lots of red picked up by the OnePlus here, which I mentioned happens in photos too sometimes. Cropping in the details look better on the S23 Ultra, but not sure what's happening with the stabilization on the 8K on the OnePlus. But the iPhone looks very detailed for 4K video, even at this level of crop. During walking stabilization, they all do well, but I'm noticing that the OnePlus 11 is picking up the walking movements a little bit more. If I had to call it, I think the iPhone looks the most stable all around in this scenario. It is a little smoother throughout the entire walk, but the S23 Ultra is also doing a great job. Samsung Super Steady Mode gets a resolution bump this year, so no more 1080p, except for the OnePlus 11. So here is the running footage. It's unbelievable the level of stabilization that we can get from our phones today, but the iPhone does look a little bit smoother than the other two phones, so let me know if you disagree. One last thing is that the Samsung and iPhone can shoot portrait mode video on the front facing camera and the OnePlus doesn't have that option. And now Samsung matches the iPhone with 4K portrait mode video on the front. Okay, so let's jump into the nighttime and I think this is where I think you'll see the value in the OnePlus 11. I'm surprised how well it keeps up with the other two, especially since night mode usually only exposes for a second or less. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. The images don't have the level of noise reduction as the other two. When you punch in, you can see that the OnePlus images are generally noisier, but it depends on the scenario. Like in this shot, it was a little darker, and when you crop in, you can see that in this shot, while the noise is a little worse, it only exposed for one second, while the other two exposed for two seconds, so that's something to keep in mind. In fact, that's why I took most of these images in night mode because check this out, while the other two see a big jump when night mode is engaged, the OnePlus looks almost exactly the same since it's built into the auto mode. This year, I'm happy that Samsung improved their processing to add more contrast to lower the noise in their images, and I think that helps a ton. Even though I think the iPhone still has better and more even noise reduction, the S23 Ultra has a huge improvement over last year's S22 Ultra. If you want to see what this looks like in action, look at the OnePlus shot with just auto and the other two with single snap. And here it is with night mode engaged. This is on the ultra wide. Here is another one in ultra wide. This is before the night mode. And there it is with the night mode kicked in. The S23 Ultra edges this one in this scenario. This one is a dramatic test. You can see from the Samsung and Apple phones that it is super dark here where you can almost see nothing. But with the max time night mode, the iPhone gets this one with the better colors and brightness. While the S23 Ultra has improved a lot, I would like to see more edge to edge sharpness throughout. I'm sure this can be fixed with a software update, but you might notice that the foreground isn't as detailed as it is in the center. Take a look at here on the bricks. I would call this one a one-off, but I've seen this in multiple images, but this could just be the growing pains of a brand new sensor, so I don't want to harp on it. 
I will say when it comes to color accuracy at night, the iPhone most of the time produces the more accurate rendition. The S23 Ultra looks great, but it's picking up a lot more red, and the iPhone is closer to reality here, but that is personal preference for you. Some people care about accuracy more than anything, but then I think it really has changed now to whatever looks best when you share it. And these three phones vary heavily depending on the scenario, so look at the examples and see which one that you like best. When it comes to dynamic range, I'm really impressed with the OnePlus 11, especially here and how it balanced out the shadow detail while keeping that neon sign under control. Look at the iPhone here, great shadow detail in the entire scene, but the neon is just blown out. Here it is from another angle, the S23 Ultra nailed it, but the OnePlus is keeping up, which is great, which is a different story from the daytime. For example, look at the water tower pics here. The dynamic range is greater on the OnePlus than both of these phones, which really surprised me. That control even in this pic is very impressive, so it looks like OnePlus is getting that advantage of the Oppo phones for nighttime photography. Even jumping into 50 megapixel high res shots during the sunrise, the OnePlus really shines here with keeping the curb sharp and retaining the dynamic range in the background. Now this is night mode in 200 megapixels on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. I didn't think that that would work, but it does. A little moon icon pops up when it's dark enough. Here is a 500% scale punch in, very detailed. You can see how they differ right here in this rock. There is a lot more texture on the Samsung shot. This next one is going to blow your mind. Besides a few minor differences in color, contrast, and exposure, it doesn't look all that different. But then when you punch into the image, my goodness, look at the metal detail on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. That is incredible. So let's talk about selfies and portrait mode before moving on to video. This looks clean on all three phones with night mode, but again, the OnePlus 11 is overexposing my skin. It probably thinks that I need it, which may be true, but it's not accurate. In some scenarios, it's not as bad like this one. This is a really solid selfie from all three of these cameras, so I think it will be personal preference. I'm really liking this portrait mode shot from the Galaxy S23 Ultra. I think it has the best balance here in this one. So if I had to call it, I think the Galaxy Galaxy S23 Ultra is the most consistent front-facing camera at night out of the three. OnePlus, if you're watching this, please tune the skin tones and white balance because here you can see just how yellow this is. It's a solid image otherwise. I mean, look again at the nice red pickup back here. Even with the night mode kicked in, the night mode makes the most difference for the S23 Ultra. The skin tones look good too, so that is a great thing. But again, the iPhone with the most accurate replication of the scene. In this portrait mode shot, I like all of them. The OnePlus and S23 Ultra looking very similar to each other, but sometimes that natural approach with the right color balance is the key, and the iPhone did that here. I do love the stylistic look of the S23 Ultra, but it picked up too much red and it is oversaturated. But this phone did just launch, so I'm looking forward to a few software updates that really can tune this camera system. So let's end this with video and let's just start with the infamous light flare test and you can see that the iPhone does have the most flaring which creates those dots on the picture sometimes and I hope this can be improved in the next iPhone. But look at the OnePlus here. It is a consistent flare which does show up in some of the photos sometimes so keep that in mind. Look at this picture here. This is what I mean. This is 4K 30 frames per second, and if you look at the flag over here, you can see the differences in dynamic range. The iPhone and the S23 Ultra is doing the best, but the iPhone is handling that slightly better. The video is a big step this year for Samsung because the image itself is sharper. Take a look at these trees, but then when you punch in, you can see that the iPhone's noise reduction is on another level, so I would love to see Samsung match that in the future. Here is a different scenario where we have some movement and I wanted to pan to simulate more of a real world case for video. The nighttime video isn't terrible on the OnePlus 11, so that's a positive thing if you're thinking about picking this phone up. In fact, if you like the brighter video, you might actually like it better. Here is another look punched in from a different angle, so I think the iPhone still has the best overall nighttime video. When it comes to nighttime stabilization, it is similar to daytime. I think OnePlus is the most noticeable with the movements. You can see the light reflections also in a real scenario on the iPhone. You can see it through the entire walking video, but the best stabilization is between the Samsung and iPhone. So let me know which one that you think did better here. This is 4K, but when you switch to 8K on the OnePlus or Samsung, you do lose a little light. 
more on the OnePlus, but if you look at the water reflections in 8K, the Samsung is very crisp, but the OnePlus actually looks a little sharper, which is awesome. The 8K video is very detailed and has no crop, which I love with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 devices, but the Samsung 8K is less noisy and more detailed, and 8K is usable this year in day and night on both the S23 Ultra and OnePlus, which I think is amazing. The OnePlus shoots 8K 24 frames per second, so that's why it looks choppier here in this timeline, but that ends this comparison, and I think this comparison shows three things. Number one, how much the Galaxy S23 Ultra has improved for photo and video. Number two, how much of a value that the OnePlus 11 is at at its price point, especially at night. And number three, how the iPhone still stays king of smartphone video and how well it keeps up when tested side by side despite it being the oldest device out of the three. So let me know which one that you think won. Is the Galaxy S23 Ultra now the new king of smartphone cameras? Let me know in the comment section below. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this. I would appreciate it so much because these videos take so much time to make and I hope you enjoy them. Subscribe for more videos like this and I will see you in the next one.